How's it going? Good well, mate. How oh. are you? Yeah, good mate. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing the work tonight. Fantastic. <laughs> Have a good one. Yeah. We'll get in. Yes. Chris Thompson. Yes. Push the video button. Push the video button. Where is the video button? It's next to the hang up button. That's the one. Oh, so you can't see us? Not yet. There we go. There I can see you. Ooh. All right. Mark's here. Hi, guys. We said we were doing the word today. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Said that yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, it's a good one. Matt and Lisa have got lots to say. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, they've been tracking on, having a good time. Yes. They've got plans on their plans. Wonderful. How are you? Good, good. very good. Today. See you, mate. See you, mate. How are you, Victor? Well, yeah, I'm not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. It was busy in the morning, but then it heated off till nothing. Yeah. Chris said you'd be very quiet. Yeah, very quiet, making making decisions. Yeah, we. I mean, it's always quiet this time of the year. We've had a really quiet time, but yeah. a couple of really low weeks, but just tracking on, you know, using mm. things through. <laughs> you know what it goes like up here in the wet season. Yeah. yeah. So it went quite too down there? Yeah, yeah, for the last few months. Yeah. yeah. So. It's always like that, but that's exciting, isn't it? Yeah. I'm in the hot seat here. <laughs> the hot seat. You're in the hot seat. <laughs> no, Matthew gave it to me. <laughs> Howdy, mate. How are you, mate? Good. Where's the bride? She's uh, she's feeding the baby. Oh, I was hoping to see her. Oh, I'll see if she's awake. It's Dougie. Yeah, see me. Matthew said he was doing a message tonight. Good, Mark, sir. Oh, yeah? Here you are. It's the family. I'm like, get in there. Yeah. Why? Get in there. Make yourself known. No. no. no I didn't do my hair. Well, oh, lovely. look at mine. It's lovely. It's lovely. Your hair's always lovely. I haven't done my hair. Have you got stuff in there? No. Some sugar dust? No. I'm going to come get a blow away. Oh, man. Renan! <laughs> Can you bring your earphones in with you? Yeah. Lisa, come on. Come in here. Oh. And they were little. They were little tops. There's a baby in that photo. The baby is strange with the other baby and they're all big. That was Lisa. Oh. Hi. Sorry, I wasn't really ready to be on like here. Yeah. I just had a shower and washed my hair, and I can't hear you. Sorry. We'll just unplug that. Here we go. Unplug that. Hi, now I can hear you. Oh, you the queen of farts. Sorry. The queen of farts. The queen of farts. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Look who's here. Hi, how are you going? Hi. Hi. <clears throat> Sorry, Tell I'm what in my pajamas. Are we doing? They're very busy planning. Yeah. Tell them, Lise. Tell them what you can do. Go on, don't be embarrassed. I don't like cameras like this. She doesn't like cameras. <laughs> hey, you look better than me. <laughs> <laughs> so she's not shy. Why should she be? Come on. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. Um, we're doing a clothing store in town finally. Oh, cool. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah, it should be good. <coughs> what kind of clothes? Uh, all different stuff. We've got Calvin Klein on board. We've got uh, American Apparel. We've got um, uh, mint pink for the girls, the dark. Um, what else? Spanish German for the guys. Wow. Um, yeah, this goes on. It's crazy. Yeah, cool. Lacoste shoes. Um, yeah, just 
some heaps and heaps of brands already on, on board and uh, yeah, we just started renovating today. Woohoo! New shop. Where's We've seen photos all that. Where's the shop? Uh, next to the health food store, but they moved. It's um where Come do us up from the pub. It used to be oh. Toy World. Do you remember that? Toy yeah, World? Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. You but, remember Toy World? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're knocking it all out and um, chip rocking it, so it's all fresh and, and new. It's oh, nice, great. Nice big shot. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Good on you, That's good. Oh, cool. So, Very exciting. <laughs> huh? Say hi to Lou and Phyllis. Sorry, I've got two combos. What? Say hi to Lou and Phyllis. Hi, Lou and Phyllis. Are they there? No. <laughs> They'll <laughs> see it. They'll see it. <laughs> Oh, hi. <laughs> cool. I um, might be recorded. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, at least I knew that it was being recorded. Oh, going hey, now. At least you guys are in your pyjamas with, you know, this hat on and wet hair and <laughs> you look better. Oh, so I'm going now. Yeah. Good to see you guys. Give us a flex. Yeah. Go on, give us a flex. Go on. Uh, go go on. on. Go on. Six pack. No. Go on. Why is that no? Bye. 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 Yeah, we've got Harry from Los Angeles. He's a musician. He's a young. Oh. I think he's only about twenty, so he'll be interesting to chat to. Yeah. And what about the ones that um, the ones that said uh, we should introduce ourselves? Yeah, Craig and Kathy. We'll get them on there as well. Yeah, get them on. We're thinking we, that we to say hello to them. We were thinking the week after. Uh, Amy and I are going to do it together, but because. Um, Lovely. Because of the kids, we, we thought, oh, we'll both uh, we'll both start each show, and then uh, after about ten minutes, one of us will leave, and we'll take turns each week. So, um, right. Well, that's a good idea. So people like uh, you know a lot of you know Phyllis and Paloma and people like that. Amy can chat with them for you know hours on end, and I'll just say hello at the beginning and the end, maybe. Yeah. And she'll, she'll do vice versa with some of the ones I'm chatting to. Or you can do it as a relay. A relay. It's like it's my ten minutes. Mark's Mark's coming in now. Just do it as a relay because it'll be fresh. Yeah. Call it the relay program. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, we're, th yeah. we're thinking of uh, getting Amy to chat with Victoria week after next. She have a lot to say. Hey. <laughs> What do you think? What no, do you think, Amy? Nobody knows who you are, Victoria. You've got a lot to say from the last. Phyllis does. Oh, I know. Phyllis does. Phyllis will be excited. I'm just um, in the back blocks here doing a lot of backup. I enjoy that. This, this is all an act, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot this this isn't real. It is. Uh, it's not. <laughs> You should hear when she gets gabbling to me. <laughs> what are we going to talk about, Amy? I have no idea. Well, it's a personal <laughs> testimony show, so if there's oh. no if there's no issues uh, per se, then it's just a matter of she, a person asking people what how do you feel about being a Natsuri and how yeah. did you come into this experience? You know, how did you how did Voss Lodge customs fall in your lap? Although they'll be the standard sort of questions I ask, and then people who are have lots of different th other things going on, like Harry, he's a musician, I'll be chatting with him about that. But Paloma, she's got a trees and a, you know, a basaur and all those sort of things. And she's got a gun out there protecting. <laughs> Tell us about your gun, Pam. Uh, that was wonderful. Yeah. That's so, heaven. I bet she can shoot that. <laughs> I'm quick on the trigger with targets not much bigger than a pinpoint on number one. That's from Annie Oakley. Okay. Amy. The Queen of Farts wouldn't know who that is. <laughs> that was a few yeah. generations. Betty Hutton. Ago. Betty Hutton. Do you know Betty Hutton? No. Your grandmother's ear, 
she's, she's a blonde bombshell dog. Ah. She was great. Yeah. Lou and Phyllis might know Betty Hutton, <laughs> but they might not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's great. That's wonderful. So yeah, giving you a heads up, Victor. Week after next. <laughs> Get your, test, get your testimony yeah, you? together. Get your testimony together. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> what do you feel, Amy, about your new plan, darling? Yeah, it's good. I haven't um, actually seen Mark tonight because to, um, I wanted to ask him what the, what was happening and stuff. So I don't know. Oh, yeah, I'm so exciting. I'm so jealous. Yeah. I can't believe you're actually doing it. Wait till Jason finds out. He'll be up and after you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we've got to wait for it to sell. I spoke to Fiona this afternoon. And yeah. I was, and I said, I'm putting the salad on the market. And we want to, uh, Amy and I just want to go. We want to take the kids out and have a bit more of a life. They're all growing up. Time's flying. And uh, I said, I want to give you the opportunity, if you want to, to buy it first. So I uh, just said... Can I um? She said, oh, "Can I can I tell you next week?" <laughs> I said, "I said yeah." <laughs> I said you got to go and you know apply and see if you can get the money and do what you're going to do and you know. And I was, yeah. but I said, I said you got a few weeks. But I said if you, if it if you can't do it, if, you, if it falls through, I said we're gonna we're gonna put it on the market. You know. And, uh, I, said, I said nobody will get rid of you though because you're the main one with the clientele. Uh, yeah. You know, my clientele is dwindling, yours is going bigger. So I said, any new employer would be crazy to get rid of you. Well, you want to say that um, she's better off to have the money than somebody else? Yeah. Oh, she wants it. She loves it. She's, she treats it like her own anyway. All she has to do is hire a hairdresser for a year or so. Yeah. So she can finish off her tech. Yeah. Where's she up? And then pass herself. She's nearly finished her second year. So well, this she's is, nearly this finished is her TAFE. second year. Yeah. This yeah. is her second year of TAFE this year. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So she's nearly finished. How exciting, eh? Yeah. So. Woo -hoo. Is it true, Amy? Are you really going to do it? Oh, she's, if it works, yeah. Yeah. She's, yeah. For sure. Yeah. How exciting, <laughs> mate. That'd be fabulous. Hit the road, mate. Yeah. Oh, I'm so jealous. Another adventure of the Davos. Yeah. I'm just watching these kids not? growing up cramped and, you know, you know. I was very depressed today, Amy. <clears throat> Oh, so angry at everything and everyone, and oh, yeah. just because he wants to spend more oh, time with his kids. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Hey? Oh, I didn't realise you were talking about Mark. Yeah. yeah. He was telling me about Brendan in the water up, up the coast. Yeah. yeah. He just wants to see more of that. Yeah. Mm. Happy. Yeah, he's happy. Isn't that exciting? Yeah, very exciting. Oh. Yeah. So you can just. You know, we want to get to know everyone so we can have relationships with the body, don't we? Yeah. And just express love to them. Mm. doesn't matter how you do it. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Just expressing love, you know. Because yeah. you don't get the opportunity to express the love you've got to anybody that's real, do you? No. So you've got the Skyping opportunity to express not milk but love. Yeah. <laughs> we can do them both at the same time if you want. <laughs> well, you do really, don't you? <laughs> Even if she's by herself, she's still love. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fantastic! So, what do you think? What's going through your head, Amy? Um, I guess I'm a little bit sceptical that it will all work out. Because it well, what are you sceptical about? That someone will buy the salon. <laughs> oh, someone will. Yeah. It's beautiful salon. It's so lovely. Yeah. We're going to talk about that tonight. Yeah. 
in the study. Great. You know? So, I mean, if you want to, you can't sit in all the time, can you? No, the kids yeah. might wake up and stuff, so. Well, when you watch it, it's all about relationship. Yeah. I just looked up these three words, nose, crown and neck. And the three of them have all come into our relationship with Yahuwah. Yeah. Well, Phyllis, I'd just like to tell you Victoria went away to have a drink of water so she wouldn't <laughs> be seen. <laughs> Isn't she gorgeous, Phyllis? Continue. <laughs> she wants to be here for you to see her again, oh, Phyllis. Stop it. Oh, you gave her such a lift, Phyllis. Yeah, she has been flying high. Yeah. What do you want to say to Phyllis, Puss? Oh, I just thank you for the encouragement. It was just so wonderful to be so loved. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm embarrassed. Why? Well, she say express your heart to Phyllis. Yeah. I just she loved think it was friend. just amazing that anyone could love someone that they don't even know, but because of Yahusha's spirit, yeah. they can she could express so much emotion and so much passionate love. I mean, it was just amazing. I've never heard of that before from just expressed. Again. Not milk. <laughs> And it was just not milk, Amy. Overwhelming. <laughs> it was. It was just wonderful. I just thank you, Phyllis. It was fabulous to hear and so encouraging. I just just kept me going for days and it's just amazing his love. And like you know, we've been talking so much about love and it says you know that like you'll know them by their love one for another, but you know, we've got to know how to express that and enjoy it and share it more. It just, it, it just showed me how it's possible that we can share that and, you know, say those beautiful things to each other instead of stuff that we've, we've done. Wonderful. What are you laughing at, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> love, mate. It's wonderful. It is. It's beautiful. She gets a ramble, doesn't she? <laughs> It's wonderful. Oh, it's just beautiful. Something I've never really experienced, especially from someone over the other side of the world. It's, it's Yahusha. She wants to come and live with Victoria. It's <laughs> amazing, wouldn't it? Um, wouldn't it be great if they could and get out of the pickle they're in? Oh, so heavy, isn't it? Such a heavy burden. I know what that's like. Oh, going through that, it's just hell. What about what Lou said to you? Me? Yeah, what you told me today. Uh, what specifically? I'm playing, I'm playing with a little thing here. He says a lot to me. What, what specifically? <laughs> I don't remember, darling. You didn't think anything. All those people for 30 years. Oh yeah, he said I've I've I haven't been able to do anything in this town of myself to wake people up. So that's, yeah. that's why I thought, well, what am I hanging around, desiring and wanting people to wake up around me for? You who sure will wake up? Who's going to wake up? And he'll tap me on the shoulder and say, "Open your mouth when he wants me to." And but but for that to be a reason to stick around in this hideous place, it's not a reason for me. Uh, when I look at my kids, you know. What about how the Christian pastors tell you you've got to love the town you're in? Yeah. yeah. Room where you planted. <laughs> Room where you planted, yeah. What are your worries going out, Amy? Oh, I'm not worried about anything. Yeah. I like yeah. adventure. I just, I, when the salon sounds like I'll be surprised, I guess. Mm. Well, won't that be a lovely surprise oh, for yeah. you? Don't you? Absolutely. But you better do some homework. Yeah. You know, you better get on the internet and see what's the best stuff to get. And, yeah. you know, you've got to work out your trailer and how you're going to set that up and <coughs> your little homespun kitchen and everything. Yeah. You can't eat out. No. <laughs> I think she's. Uh, I think the part that's unbelievable is that um, 
I like because ever since we've met, we've both been broke due to our own stupid decisions. So I think for somebody to come along and hand us that much money and say you've actually achieved something that's worth that, that that's just unbelievable to us. So like we can't imagine that happening. Here, here's thirty, forty, fifty. Oh, that's beautiful, Sal. I don't know why you're running yourself oh, down. No, because it's just no one's ever, you know, we've never, never had anybody hand us that much money before. And that's not oh, a lot of money. Oh. It's a lot to us, but. Oh, yeah, of yeah, course it, it is. It still doesn't go very far once you get the things you need, but I just mean <coughs> fact, fact that... Well, I imagine the adventure you're going to have. Mm. Mm. You know, you'll be able to pick peanuts, Amy. Yeah. Pick peanuts. <laughs> you will be too. Fruit picking and peanut picking and, you know, all that sort of stuff. Remember the empires? Uh, <laughs> Gutting the fish. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, that's what Yeah. For the cyclone. Mm. Yeah, well, you know, mm. you go where you've got to go, mm. but wouldn't that be an adventure anyway? Yeah. The whole thing would be an adventure. Yeah. You know? Mm. But only one of you can do it because you've got the kids to look after. Yeah. No. I still think we'll make a lot more money just cutting cutting hair under a tree somewhere. <laughs> These country folk are, don't mind. You know, so, when you don't have an establishment to try and keep alive. Oh, it sounds fantastic. <laughs> just it's a wonderful idea. Victoria's all for it. <laughs> She loves hairdressing. Yeah. She loves it every day of her life. She loves it. Oh, I'm jealous. I wish I loved it that much. It'd make it easier. <laughs> yeah. I just can't get excited. The clients, the clients just want to talk to me about their hair all the time. <laughs> I'm just. I'm just I was just looking at them through the mirror going, oh, you are so boring. <laughs> you know? Oh, oh it's just, I've got all this other stuff that's actually exciting and you who's moving. Yeah. And, and these people just want to purse their lips. <laughs> you know, and I'm just like, oh, okay, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And inside I'm just screaming, going, oh, my goodness. Put your I said to I said to Victor today on the phone after speaking to you, I want to go. Uh, <laughs> take me up in the salon if yeah. he wants to go, and I'm going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and um, <laughs> you know what she said? What? She started talking to all the clients about Yahusha. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I've got to have a purpose. It's got to be more purposeful. And... Um, yeah, it was crazy, the conversations after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we just, you just can't move. You've got to stay where you are. You can't move when you can't move, mm. you know, if you're not freed up, can you? No. No. But you guys are freed up. I think it would be great. You know, you can always settle down later on if there's enough time. I think it's just bugging you so much you want to get out and see it all, don't you? Yeah. 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 Um, you want to go to America first, Amy? We'd like oh, to. I like that idea. But just I'm, I haven't really spoken to Mark about it yet, what he thinks. Well, I, I love it too. It just really came down to how much we've got and then do we want to waste that much and then come back and not have very much to... To go. Of course I'd love to go. All these new people we're meeting and Skyping with a little travelling hairdressing minstrel group. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be fun. Fun as going around and meeting everybody and but uh it just it just depends. Of course I'd love to. Well you've got to work it out. You won't know until the money gets in your hands and then you'll say and you do all your homework and see what things cost. Mm. Maybe you can buy second hand stuff when you get back instead of brand new. Yeah, who sure will open all the doors for you? Mm. Your mother and father did this, Amy. Mm. <laughs> they went to America, mm. didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they loved it. Yeah, very different experience for you guys, I think. Yeah. 
Yeah. Really exciting. Mm. Well, we'd better get going, Mark, because, you know, you'll be over hours and hours over it. You don't want that, do you? No. Uh, want to play in? I don't mind if you want to Have see a good it. show. Thank you, darling. See you later. I'm really happy for you. Oh, I think it's fabulous news. Thanks. Best news I've heard for yonks. Oh, great. Yeah. All righty. See ya. Bye. Everybody, welcome to Off the Cuff. The first scripture is Bereshit 24. That's Genesis 24. Yep. Yes, yeah, so I was quite shocked. Hey, the last two, crown and neck, I did I just looked up and just sort of picked a random scripture, and they were both in Jeremiah. Yeah. So I thought, oh, well, I didn't realise up till I'd written them all out, and then I thought, oh, they're the same. They're pretty close together, but why not? Let's go there. He's saying something to us. So you just look up these words and you look at the teaching around it and you think, wow. Mm -hmm. you know? And we're still in the head and the head's talking to us. Isn't it? Yeah. Okay, glasses, glasses. Here they are. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I just yeah. plugged my thing back in. Great. That's the best time you did that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's better. You can't even see that, can you? No. Right, well, shall we begin, Sire? Yes. Yes, yes. And the word we're looking for is nose ring. Nose ring. That's still in the head, isn't it? Mm. That's an ornament that goes in the head. So nose ring. I was looking for earlobe, and then I saw nose ring, and I thought, well, that's appropriate. Mm. So I'll see what the nose is going to ring about. Beautiful. Beautiful. Beautiful, mate. <laughs> so, Bereshith 24, and Abraham was old and advanced in years, and Yahuwah had blessed Abraham in every way. And Abraham said to the oldest servant of his house, who did he say it to? The oldest servant in his house. So this is the person we're going to look at. We're going to look at this person's relationship with Yahuwah. There's all sorts of relationships in this scripture, but this is the main one we're going to con concentrate on, the servant. The servant and how the servant is and how the servant has a relationship with Yahuwah. <coughs> um, and Abraham said to the oldest servant of his house, who ruled over all that he had, so there's a pretty cluey servant. Please put your hand under my thigh so that I make you swear by Yahuwah, the Elohim of the heavens and the Elohim of the earth, that you do not take a wife, that you do not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell, but to go to my land and to my relatives and take a wife for my son, Yitzhak. And the servant said to him, What if the woman refuses to follow me to this land? Do I then take your son back to the land from which you came? This is interesting. And Abraham said to him, This is the relationship 
the servant has with Abraham first, beware lest you take my son back there. <coughs> so I wonder why he was saying that. It's a pretty wicked place, wasn't it? Yeah? Yeah. Yahuwah Elohim um, of the heavens who took me from my father's house and from the land of my relatives and who spoke to me and swore to me, saying, to your seed I give this land. He sends his messenger before you. So Abraham's saying that there's going to be like an angel, a messenger, going before the servant. Mm. That would have given him confidence. You think of your journey you're about to take, Mark? Mm. Um, <clears throat> And you shall take a wife for my son from there. And if the woman refuses to follow you, then you shall be released from this oath. Only do not take my son back there. Then the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham, his master, and swore to him concerning this matter. So here's the servant having a relationship with Abraham. The servant took ten of his master's camels and left for all his master's good gifts were in his hand. And he arose and went with Aram, went to Aram, what is that, Mark? Naharayaram. Naharim. Naharim. Naharayim. To the Naharayim. Yeah. Naharim. Sounds like harem. Yeah. Um, to the city of Nahor. And he made his camels kneel down outside the city by a fountain of water at evening time, the time when women go out to draw water. So the, the man, the servant, has gone to this place. Look what he says. And he said to who? Elohim, Yahuwah. said to Yahuwah, Elohim of my master Abraham, please cause her to meet before me this day and show kindness to my master Abraham. So the servant is interested in fulfilling the message, the, the job that he's given to do. Mm. And he's actually, look at the relationship he's having with Yahuwah. What does that tell us? That uh, he's flowing. Yahuwah wants this sort of a deep relationship with everybody. Brothers and sisters out there, he wants you to have this sort of relationship with him that you can communicate with him. After all, why would you have a body? Why would you have a bride? And what's the communication? Love. That's why we all need to know each other and express our love to each other because there's not many out there that we can express it to. So we need to find each other and have a wonderful relationship and make our joy complete because there's only going to be a remnant so we may as well know who we are. It's vitally important that we get con in contact. What Lou's doing is fabulous. So he's asking an amazing thing to happen, isn't he? I um, was having a shower the other morning and Yahuwah said to me, and I didn't realise it till after I've read this, he said to me, have a shave because somebody might because I was pretty scanty and I needed a shave. He said, somebody might want you and they might call you up from the salon to go and do a cut. So I said, oh, I couldn't be, but I haven't got any appointments and I just sort of blasted it off. But when I sat down and I read this, I realised that actually Yahuwah had said that to me, but I wasn't tuned in enough. Okay? And when you rang me, I was still unshaven and I was going to show you that how unshaven I was and just to use it as an example. And then when the day went by and we didn't do this <coughs> till now, I thought, you know, I'd had a shave and I thought, oh, I won't say anything, this is ridiculous. But then I read this again and I thought, no, I will say it because everybody needs to know they're hearing his voice. It's not our imagination, and he does want this loving relationship with us. Mm -hmm. He wants us to hear him 
and he will be in everything we do and he will show us the way. He will show us the way he wants us to go, where he's going to lead us. So you think about your journey you're about to undertake, Mark, <clears throat> you can go out with Yahushua with his blessing. Right, and he was only interested um, in, um, and he said, Yahuwah, my master Abraham, please cause her to meet me this day and show kindness to my master Abraham. He's more interested in Yahuwah showing kindness to Abraham than who? Himself. And this is where we have to be. If you're willing to give up yourself and go, he'll be with you. See, I am standing here by the, for, by the fountain of water and the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Now let it be that the young woman to whom I say, please let me let down your jar, let me, please let down your jar to let me drink. And she says, drink and let, let me water your camels too. So how personal is that? Mm. How clear is the message? How amazing is it? For this him to have this relationship with Yahuwah, mm. right? And Yahuwah is responding. Yeah. Um, verse 14, please let her drink and let the water of the camels too. Let her be the one whom you have appointed for your servant, Yitzhak, and let me know by this that you have shown kindness to my master. How involved is it? Very. You know? Mm. And it's very simple, and it's just a simple thing that we do. We, we live every day. Simple, simply. Yeah. But he wants to be involved with us. Mm. And he came to, because he loves us that much. He died for us, shed his blood for us. The creator didn't care about having a life on earth. He just wanted to do this for us so we know his love, so we can express that love. We can come into covenant relationship and understand him. Mm. It's so wonderful, so amazing. Mm. And it came to be before he had ended speaking that see Ribka, who was born of Bethuel, son of Milka, and the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, came out with her jar on her shoulder. And the young woman was very good looking, a maiden, not having known her, not no man having known her, and she went down to the fountain, filled her jar and came up, and the servant ran to meet her and said, please let me drink a little water from your jar. How about this? And she said, drink, my master. And she hurried and let her jar down to her hand and gave him a drink. And when she had finished giving him a drink, she said, let me draw water for your camels too until they have finished drinking. How about that? This is what he asked for. And it's actually happening. We saw him ask. We're seeing it happen. Mm. And she hurried and emptied her jar into the trough, ran back to the fountain to draw water and drew for all his camels. And watching her, the man was, the man remained silent in order to know whether Yahuwah had prospered his way or not. And it came to be when the camels had finished drinking that the man took a golden nose ring weighing half a shekel and two bracelets for her wrist weighing ten shekels of gold. So he didn't waste time, did he? He knew this was it. He understood and whack on goes the jewels, on goes the gold. And said it was just like a gift for what she did for her and said, whose daughter are you? Please inform me, is there room in your father's house for us to spend the night? And she said to him, I'm the daughter of Bethuel, my milk, Milka's son, who she bore to Nahor. And she said to him, we have both straw and fodder enough and room to spend the night. And the man bowed down his head and worshipped Yahuwah right in front of her. And he said, blessed be Yahuwah Elohim of my master Abraham. So she knew, oh, what's going on here? Who has not has not forsaken his kindness and his truth towards my master. So he's only interested in the master, not himself. We are so interested in ourselves. We are so involved with ourselves. The natural, the mindset that we've come out of the world has to die. We have to be more concerned with the processes that Yahuwah is giving us. 
As for me being on the way, Yahuwah led me to the house of my master's brothers. He did, didn't he? Then the young woman ran and informed those of her mother's house these matters. So told them all. And Ribka had a brother whose name was Laban. Remember Laban, what he did to um, Yitchak's son? Yeah. And Laban ran out to the man, ran out to the man to the fountain. And it came to be when he saw the nose ring and the bracelets in his sister's wrists. And when he heard the words of his sister Ribka saying, Thus the man spoke to me, that he went to the man and saw him standing by the camels at the fountain. And he said, Come in, O blessed of Yahuwah. Why do you stand outside? I myself have prepared a house and a place for camel, for the camels. So the man came into the house while he unloaded the camels and provided straw and fodder to the camels and water to wash his feet and the feet of the men who were with him and set food before him to eat. But he said, let me not eat until I have spoken my word. And he said, speak on. And he said, I am Abraham's servant and Yahuwah has blessed my master exceedingly and has... And he has become great and he has given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and male and female servants and camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when he, she was old and he has given to him all that he has. And my master made me swear, saying, Do not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I dwell. But I go to my father's house but go to my father's house and to my relatives and take a wife for my son. And I said to my master, what if the woman does not follow me? But he said to me, Yahuwah before, before whom I walk sends his messenger with you and shall prosper your way. And you shall take a wife for my son from the relatives and from, from my relatives and from my father's house. Then when, when you go to my relatives, you are to be released from this oath. All right? And if you do not give her, to, and if they do not give her to you, then you are released from my oath. And this day I came to the fountain and said, Yahuwah Elohim of my master, Abraham, please, if you are prospering the, the way in which I am going, see, that sounds a bit funny, and this... And this day I came to the fountain and said, Yes, Yahuwah Elohim of my master Abraham, please, if you are prospering the way in which I am going, see, I am standing by the fountain of water. And when the maiden comes out to draw water, and I shall say to her, Please give me a little water from, the jar, from your jar to drink. And she says to me, Drink and let me draw for your camels too. Let her be the woman whom Yahuwah has appointed for my master's son. So is that two or three times we've heard the story? I think this might be the third now. Yeah. So here's the third story. And networking? Yeah. He's networking. Yeah. He's telling everybody what went down, what Yahuwah said, what Abraham said. He's talking of the relationship and the son. Mm -hmm. So what are these people seeing in a servant's behaviour and his words? Hey, amazing stuff, yeah? yeah? He's really flowing with Yahuwah. Hmm. I have not yet, verse 45, I have not yet en entered speaking in my heart. Then see, see, I had not yet entered speaking in my heart. Then see, Ribka was coming out with her jar on her shoulder and she went down to the fountain and drew water and I said to her, Please let me drink. And she hurried and let the jar down from her shoulder and said, Drink and let me water your camels too. So I drank and she watered the camels too. So Yahushua's telling us here it's the fourth time. Yeah. We're a bit thick. <laughs> so things have to be repeated over and over and over. So we get the point that he wants this type of a relationship with his bride. We are his chosen bride. He wants to communicate with us right down to the last <clears throat> yeah. And I asked her and said, Whose daughter are you? And she said, The daughter of Bethuel Nahor's son, whom Milka bore to him. Then I put the nose ring on her nose and the bracelets on her wrist, and I bowed my head and worshipped. 
Yahuwah. He's telling every detail, same as what she said to them. And blessed Yahuwah Elohim of my master Abraham, who had led me in the true way to take the daughter of my master's brother for him, for his son. How about that? And now if you are going to show kindness and truth to my master, it's always to the master, not himself. He's really concerned about doing what he's been told. We have to be like that. Let me know. And if not, let me know so that I turn to the right or to the left. And Laban answered Bethuel to and said, so that the two of them answered, son and the father, the matter comes from Yahuwah. We are not able to speak to you either evil or good. The matter comes from Yahuwah. They believed. Wouldn't it be wonderful to mix with people that all believed? And that's what we're endeavouring to do, to get the body together so the body will speak to itself. All the members will know each other as much as we can. Hallelujah, eh? Oh, wonderful. <laughs> this is like prophecy being fulfilled that Lou's doing, getting all this together. Verse 51, see, Ribka is before you. Take, take her and go and let her be your master's son's wife and Yahuwah, as Yahuwah has spoken. And it came to be when Abraham's servant heard their words that he bowed himself towards the earth before Yahuwah. How humble and wonderful. He's worshipping and saying, this is amazing. I'm having this incredible experience with you, Father. I worship you. These are the sort of things you'll be able to do yeah, out in the road. 53. And the servant brought out ornaments of silver and ornaments of gold and garments and gave them to Ribka. He also gave costly gifts to her brother and to her mother. And he and the men who were with him ate and drank and spent the night. When they arose in the morning, he said, let me go to my master. But her brother and her mother said, let the young woman stay with us a few days, at least 10, then you go. It's being held up. For what reason? They all realise that they've changed their mind because they're men and women. They've changed their mind. So look at his answer. And he said to them, do not delay me. Since Yahuwah has prospered my way, let me go that I may go to my master. And they said, let us call the young woman and ask her. So they called Rivka and said to her, are you going with this man? And she said, I shall go. Mm. Hey, is Yahuwah moving again? Mm. You know, she wanted, she wanted to see all this and be part of all this and she's got a husband and it's from Yahuwah. Mm. Wouldn't you go? Yeah. You trust Yahuwah? You've been brought up in the faith? You'd go. This is how we could all live. This is how everyone could be, listening to him and being involved with what he's doing. So they let Ribko and their sister and her nurse and Abraham's servant and his men, they let them go. And they blessed Ribka and said to her, let our sister become the mother of thousands of ten thousands and let your seed possess the gates of those who hate them. What does that tell you? It happened. Remember the story of Rachel, yeah. Ribka, mm. Becca, or is it? Uh, yeah, that was Jacob's wife. Yeah, Ribka, mm. Rachel. Mm. And Ribka and her young woman arose and they rode on the camels and followed the men. Mm. So the servant took Ribka and left. And Yitchak came from the way of what? Mark, you can say that one. Beer. Yeah, keep going. Be a lahai rai. There you are. I bet, I bet um, the toot toot will love that, Colin. <laughs> He'll love, love to copy that accent. Be lahai rai. So here we are. We're back. We're shifted back. We don't have to go on the hard journey. We're shifted back to the main point. Right, so there's Yitchek came from the way. He's coming back. To the, to the camp, for he dwelt in the south. And Yitchak went out to me meditate in the field in the evening. 
And he lifted his eyes and looked and saw the camels coming. And Ribka lifted her eyes, and when she saw y Yitchak, she dismounted from a camel. Amazing, eh? And she said to the servant, Who is this man walking in the field to meet us? And the servant said, It is my master. She took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Yitchak all the matters he had done. And Yitchak, and so he went through the story again, because you wouldn't mind telling the story because it's so wonderful and amazing. And Yitchak brought her into his mother Sarah's tent. Sarah was dead. That's why he took her in the tent. It's going to be her tent now. And he took Ribka and she became his wife. That's it, mate. Bang. Yeah. And he loved her. Thus Yitchak was comforted after his mother's death. There you are. What are you going to tell me? Oh, just how just how personal and how into every detail you who are is and orchestrating all these things and a lot of the time we flow with him but we don't even know we're flowing with him and a lot of the time we don't flow with him. But even when we do flow with him, we don't even know we're flowing with him because we've been brought up in such a... I don't know, humanistic society that we think everything that we do is our own choice and we're in control of everything. And if something does, if two things do happen that are too similar, it was just a coincidence. That's not you who are, you know. But, but it is you who are. Everything is, you know. You, I mean, I don't mind telling the kids, you know, the kids will jump up and down and scream and throw a big tantrum and then they'll kick their foot on the door. I said, ah. Oh. See what happens when you behave like that? Who should just gave you a little bit of a smack there? I don't mind saying that sort of thing to the kids, and yet if it happened to me, ah, <laughs> you know, we're not seeing you in in everything, you know. Yeah. This relationship is just amazing. Yeah. So, you know, and most of us would just go, yeah, we can wait ten days. The master won't mind. Hang out with your daughter for a while, you know. You not, may not see her again. It's okay, no problem. My master can wait. He, not him, no way. He, no. He, he's been given what he was given and he was, i got to go and tell my master. That's what I came here to do. He wasn't living at all for himself. Why do you choose a bride? To You choose a bride to love because you want to be married. You want to be in love. You want to have a companion. You don't want to be alone. So that's why he's chosen us. Mm. Yeah? Mm. But we don't respond like a bride does, do we? No. Which mm. shows us we have to be cleaned up, doesn't it? Mm. I mean, we were, look how many Natsram are out there but don't contact, won't come in, mm. won't make themselves known and won't just, you know, lose, lose just a man like we are and he just wants to love people and have nice relationships with the body. Mm -hmm. He's got an amazing gift, you know. What's the use of being jealous of somebody like that? Somebody like that you need to encourage, you know. He needs our encouragement and love. You know, anyway, he, he wants a bride and he's ma manifesting himself. Remember how he was in the temple? He sat on the throne in the temple. His presence was there. But because of what Israel did, his presence just gradually left the place until he wasn't there at all. Then it, then, then it ended up in divorce. Yeah. And it's never come back yet. The bride's never come back. Israel's temple has never been built. He won't allow it. It has never been built to this day. The land is a waste. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. And his word goes, mate. You know, what he says happens. And what he says about a relationship, well, we should be like the servant and just say yes. Like a, accept the kingdom, you can't enter the kingdom unless you do it like a child. Yes. And that older brother needs to understand that Yahuwah is Yahusha. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> the 
and they need to come into the covenant, the same as we have. It's so mm. exciting, Mark. So wonderful and exciting, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Getting all hot. Mm. It was very hot in there. That cardi on. It's got hot in the room. Maybe the weather's clouds have come over. Okay, the next one we're going to uh, Yirmiyahu chapter two. Yirmiyahu chapter two. Page 467. <coughs> oh, remember we got to the word nose ring in that chapter? Yeah. We put the ring in a nose straight away. We forgot to pull that out. So that was the first word, wasn't it? Yeah. Look at the teaching that comes with... A thing like that, you just look up nose ring. Yeah. You want a relationship through the nose ring. <laughs> okay. The word in this one is crown. Right. I don't know what sort of crown you're thinking of, but we'll see. Mm. Won't we? Yeah. Chapter 2. And the word of you who are came to me saying, Go, and you shall cry in the hearing of Jerusalem, saying, <clears throat> Thus said Yahuwah, I remember you, the kindness of your youth, the love of your bridehood, the love of your bridehood. Show us when your you... bridehood. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. <laughs> when, a, when a bride is in love, yeah. you know. Remember Amy, when she got married, she was so in love with you. And you wanted to walk her lovely dress through the water. <laughs> That's right. Remember you wanted to stand in the water? Yeah, and get that, That's stupid. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. yeah. You forgot about that, didn't you? I did, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, that's just beautiful. I remember you, the kindness of your youth and the love of your bridehood. When you went after me in the wilderness in a land that was not sown, Israel was set apart to Yahuwah, the first fruits of his increase. All who ate of it became guilty. Evil came upon them, declares Yahuwah. Hear the word of Yahuwah, O house of Yaakim, and all the clans of the house of Israel. So there's the two sticks, Yaakim and Israel. Israel. Thus said Yahuwah, what unrighteousness have your fathers found in me? that they have gone far from me and went after worthlessness and became worthless. So he's speaking to the house of Jacob and all the clans of the house of Israel. <coughs> I think, oh yeah, that's in the next one. <coughs> So they become worthless, and why, wonder why. Mm. And didn't did not they say, "Where is Yahuwah? Where is Yahuwah? Who brought us up at, out of the land of Mitzrayim? Where is he? Who led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and pits, through a land of drought and the shadow of death, a land that no one passed through, and where no <coughs> no one dwelt." Then I, so this is. Yeremi Yahu telling all these people. Then I brought you into a garden land to eat its fruit and its goodness. But when you entered, you defiled my land and made my inheritance an abomination. Okay? So this is what they've done. The, so he's having he's having to prophesy to the people and tell them what Yahu is saying because None of, there's no one there to have a relationship with Yahuwah except Yeremiyahu. So here again is a servant going out and having to say all these things to the leaders of the nation and tell these things to them. Verse 8, the priests did not say, where is Yahuwah and, who, and those who handled the Torah did not know me. Those who handle the Torah did not know me. The relationship again. Mm. He wants a relationship. 
But these people handling the Torah didn't know him. So he would think we went haywire. And the shepherds transgressed against me and the prophets prophesied by Baal and walked after matters that did not profit. Therefore I still contend with you, declares Yahuwah, and with your children's children I contend. I think he is still contending today with all of us, with Nazareth and with the older brother. I think he's contending with us. Otherwise, we would be in this relationship, yeah? But we're contending with him and he's contending with us. He's showing us, isn't he? Yeah. He's showing us in our lives what he likes and what he doesn't. So we are in a relationship, but he's bringing us through. For pass beyond the isles of Kittim and see, and send Kedah and observe well, and see if there has been any like this. Has a nation changed its mighty ones, which are not mighty ones, but my people have changed my esteem for that which does not profit? What about that? My esteem is symbolic of his ark. It says at the bottom there. So the, they've changed my esteem for that which does not profit. This is what's gone on. They've gone into a spiritual adultery, which is idolatry. Be amazed, O heavens, at this, and be frightened. Be utterly dried up, declares Yahuwah. For my people have done two evils. They have forsaken me. Relationship. They've forsaken the relationship. <clears throat> the fountain of living waters to hew out for themselves cisterns, crack cisterns which do not hold water. Here they have the fountain of living waters and they're doing this. If Israel, what, is Israel a servant? Was he born in a house? Well, why is he given to plunder? The young lions roared at him, they growled and made his land waste. His cities have been burned without inhabitant. Even the sons of Noph and of Taphnes. Taphnes? Taphnes. He's a little bit. Has shaven the what? Crown. Of? Your head. What does that mean? They're pagans. Yeah. <clears throat> Like the monks do, yeah. Catholic monks, they shave their head bald. Mm. Not so much today, but they did, didn't they? Mm. And that's where they got it from, here. Mm. They got it from who? Israel. Yeah. <laughs> Israel knew the truth, and yet they profaned everything and they became worse than other nations ever, ever could even get to. That's why he detested them and divorced them. Mm. And here he is wanting to have a relationship before he does the destruction. And he's telling them all what he's going to do. And what he wants, his servant, here's the servant again. He uses the servant. He wants us as servants to go out and do his bidding. You have not done this to yourself by forsaking Yahuwah, your Elohim, when he led you in the way, and now why take the way to Mitzrayim to drink the waters of Sh Shihor? Or why take the way to Asher to drink the waters of the river? What would the waters be, mate? Uh, they'd be doctrines, wouldn't they? Yeah. Just an evil mindset. Your own evil instructs you, and your backslidings reprove you. Know therefore and see that it is evil and bitter that you have forsaken Yahuwah, your Elohim, and that my fear is not in you, declares the Master host, the Master Yahuwah of hosts. When you're in deep sin, when you're in sin, you are really separated. You really, it says there, your backslidings reprove you. The guilt of what you've done and what you've said and the heaviness on you and it's just bondage is just 
horrific, that's his wrath, you know, having that on you and knowing how wrong you are and knowing that everything is failing in your life, everything's not working, everything's hard, it's hard to get ahead, it's hard to move on, it's hard to make good decisions. There's always drama and hassles and problems. This is because we reject his word. That's what I lived, Mark, and I know a lot of people live that and they don't want to face it. But they're contending with Yahuwah all the time. He's there trying to have this relationship with a wicked generation. He's warning them and giving them an opportunity and yet they still contend, they deny him. And, of course, that's going to have, have to have something happen about that, isn't it? Mm. Verse 20, for of old you have broken your yoke and tore of your bonds and you said, I am not serving you, when on every high hill and under every green tree you lay down a whore. Mm. I used to have an idol hanging up, on a carved wooden idol when I was into um, um, Buddhism and Hinduism. And we used to offer, make offerings of food to it. Every morning we used to sit there and pull the curtain apart and was hanging there all golden and we used to bow down to it and worship. That's such bondage, such slavery. We put offerings out the front and the back door like the Balinese, you know. We were following all that. It's so dreadful and so horrible. Verse 21 Yet I have planted your choice vine, planted you a choice vine, all of it a true seed. How then have you turned before me into a degenerate plant of a strange vine? What's the answer to that, no? How then have you turned before me into the degenerate plant of a strange vine? How have you Yet I, I have planted you a choice vine, all of it true seed. So how did that happen? How have they become a gen degenerate plant? Well, physically, they'll mix, they'll mixed with other seed. Spir yep. Spiritually, they are into adultery. I mean, I'm not getting into the genetic side of it, but that happened too. Yeah. But um, and, and they walked away from the relationship. Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't you say that? Yes. They walked away from a beautiful, wonderful, loving, kind saviour. Mm. Oh. Yeah. You think of everything they saw and they were supposed to pass it on to us. Mm. I think mm. of the suffering that I've had in my life because they didn't pass the word on. Mm. You know, they were the bride and he divorced them and scattered them into the nations and we have inherited their sin. Mm. And that's why we've all suffered so much. And how wonderful it is to hear that there is a saviour, that you can get out of all this. How wonderful. Yeah. You know, there's a way out. Mm. You know? And he's choosing the ones. Mm. Why the hell I got chosen, I don't know, but he's choosing the ones that he wants for his bride. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Like the servant, bow down to him. Right, 22, <clears throat> although you wash yourself with lie, with lie and use much soap, yet your crookedness is ingrained before me, declares the Master Yahuwah. I beg your pardon? Mm. How, do you say, <laughs> how do you say I am not defiled? I have not gone after the B-A-A-L-S. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have said that before. See your way in the valley. Know what you have done, a swift dromedary breaking loose in her ways. What's a dromedary, Mark? Swift dromedary breaking loose in her I wouldn't have a clue. I could guess it would be a stock type animal. Dromedary. It's a one hump camel. camel. Mm -hmm. A wild donkey used to the wilderness, used to the wilderness, sniff the wind in the desire of her being in her time of mating. Who turns her away? All those who seek her need not weary themselves. In her mouth they find her. How bizarre. What a, what a way to use it. Keep your foot from being bare 
and your throat from thirst. But you said, it is useless because I love strangers, and after them I go. Uh, as the thief is ashamed, when he is found out, so is the house of Israel ashamed. They and their sovereigns and their heads and their priests and their prophets, all of them went against Yahuwah. All of them went this way trying to obviously be someone wonderful. Saying to a tree, you are my father, and to a stone, you gave birth to me, for they have turned their back to me and not their face. This is what all the madness people worship, you know. But in time of their calamity, they say, arise and save us. They're still doing all this stuff, yeah. worshipping the rocks and the trees and everything. Yeah. But where are your mighty ones that you have made for yourselves? Let them arise. See if they save you in the time of your calamity, because your mighty ones have become as many as your cities. There's so many dietaries, O oh, Yehuda. So we're speaking to Yehuda. Why do you complain to me? You all have transgressed me, declares Yehuda. In vain have I smitten your children. They receive no instruction. Your sword has devoured your prophets like a destroying lion. O oh, generation, see the word of Yahuwah. Have I been a wilderness to Israel or a land of darkness? Why do my people say, we have broken loose, we come to you no more? Oh, how disgusting. Would a maiden forget her ornaments or a bride relationship, her headband? Yet my people have forgotten me. Days without number. Wow. That's it. We've mm. forgotten him. Why do you embellish your way to seek love? Therefore you have every therefore you have even taught the evil woman your ways. Who's the evil woman? Uh, the evil woman, that, that would be a prostitute, wouldn't it? Yeah, who's the great whore? Yeah. Where did she learn her ways? Probably from Israel. <laughs> See? See? Yeah. Israel's in the same category today as the Pope. Mm. It's no difference. So they have to come out of that. The older brother has to see this. There's no other way, there's no other way but for the older brother to realise the two sticks have to come together. There is no other way. Even on your skirts is found the blood of the lives of poor innocents. You did not find them breaking in, but in spite of all these, you say, because I am innocent, certainly his displeasure shall turn from me. Rubbish. See, I shall bring judgment on you because you say, I have not sinned. So there's going to be judgment on Yehuda. Why do you go about so much to change your way? Even of Mithraim you are to be ashamed as you were ashamed of Asher. Even from this one you shall go forth with your hands on your head, for Yehuda has rejected those you trust, and you shall not prosper by them. Mm. How old are you, Mark? I'll be 35 in uh, <coughs> oh, about a month. <coughs> Three weeks. What does a 35-year-old think of that? That's the crown. Mm. We just looked up that teaching from the crown. Mm. What's a 35-year-old think of that? That uh, I feel very fortunate to have spent most of my latter Christian years and all of my Nazarene years so far, which which has been seven or seven years or so, hanging around old people <laughs> who have done a lot of the things that I haven't had a chance to, and have told me it's all it's all uh, futile, you know. Because people our age are told you have to slave away and you have to 
You're not anything unless you buy a house and a, and a pretty good car and a, all that stuff. Well, you guys and lots of other people, old people, have done all that, and you've told me it's just burden after burden after burden, you know. And I look at I look at what my wife would have to do and what my children, the institutions they would have to go into for me to successfully do that, and I hate it, you know. Some people are afraid to uplift their children, uproot their children a lot, and move them around a lot. But I mean, I was, I was in the same home for 26 years until I got married. From when I was born to when I got married, and I still turned out, you know, an arrogant little turd. So it's like, it's not really a judge of character. You know, I don't think those things are important. I think everybody's got their own journey to find with Yahua. And but specifically to this chapter. Idolatry. It's so easy to, to walk off the path. It's a very narrow path. You've got to be so careful with the decisions you make. Um. Yeah. Mm. I'd just like to say to everyone out there, all the sins that you have been involved in and that you have carried and probably still do carry, you can be released from and you don't have to feel guilt and hurt and pain anymore about it because that's what the blood of Yahushua does and that's what Passover is all about. That's why we're celebrating it, mm. you know. He can wash you clean and cleanse you. You can be set free but all your sins have been handed down to you right from, from Israel. They had a relationship and they were supposed to pass it on. Thank goodness we have a record of the loving kindness of Yahuwah. Thank goodness we can see his personality through his word. Thank goodness we can believe in the word that it's been tested and tried and it won't, won't fail. If you use it in your life, it won't fail. Thank goodness we know him by his word how loving and kind and long-suffering. Oh, he's long-suffered for us. We don't deserve that long-suffering, but he thinks we do and he loves us. And what are we going to say? Yes, help me, forgive me. How wonderful is his love, with the relationship he wants to have with us. And we're terrified to even communicate with each other. We love you, brothers and sisters. Don't be afraid. Yahuwah's love is wonderful. He wants to come into you so you get to know other brothers and sisters who are genuine and real and won't hurt you because that's the right behaviour. So it's fantastic, isn't it, Mark? Yeah. So here's the two chapters, it, nose ring and crown, and they're both about his relationship with us. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. We're going over to seven now, Jeremiah seven, Jeremiah sorry, seven. <coughs> How's this suit your situation? So what are you thinking? What are you thinking of doing? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 The, chapter seven, Yeremiah. The word that came to Yeremiah from Yahuwah. So this comes from Yahuwah, saying, and he's a servant, and he has to stand in the gate of the house of Yahuwah. That means Yerushalayim, and you shall proclaim there this word, and shall say. Hear the word of Yahuwah, all you of Yehuda, who enter into the in at these gates to bow before Yahuwah. <clears throat> so this goes from verse 1 to 7. And it's got a black line down the side which says it's an unfulfilled pro prophecy. Mm. Thus said Yahuwah of hosts, the Elohim, verse 3. Israel, make your ways and your deeds good. Then I let you dwell in this place. Do not trust in these false words, saying, This is the heckle of Yahuwah, 
What's a heckel, Mark? A temple. Right? The temple of Yahuwah. The temple of Yahuwah. Do not trust in these false words saying this. For if you truly make your ways and your deeds, your ways and your deeds good, if you truly do right ruling between a man and his neighbour, if you do not oppress the stranger, the fatherless and the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place or walk after other mighty ones to your own evil, then I shall let you dwell in this place in the land that I gave to your fathers forever <coughs> and ever. Adam and Eve missed out never and ever. Mm. And so Israel has missed out on ever and ever. She got divorced. Yahuwah came, renewed the covenant. Mm. Now it's up to us mm. to overcome. <clears throat> so we make forever and ever. Mm. Verse 8. So you are trusting in false words which do not profit. This is what this is what he had to stand in the gates and say to all the Pharisees and everyone coming through. Mm. Stealing, mm. murdering, and committing adultery and swearing falsely and burning incense to BAAL, which is Satan, and walking after other mighty ones you have not known, and you come and stood before me in this house, which is called by my name, and said, We have been delivered in order to do all these abominations. So they said they've been delivered by Yahuwah so that they can do all the abominations. They're free to do what they want. That's not a relationship, is it? It's mm -hmm. total selfishness. Yeah. Has this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? Look, I even, I myself have seen it, declares Yahuwah. But go now to my place at Shiloh, where I set my name at the first, and see what I did what I did to it because of the evil of my people, Israel. So Israel <coughs> here had already been divorced. Yeah, scattered, taken into Babylon. And now he's speaking to Yehuda. Yep. And now because you have done all these works, declares Yahuwah, and I spoke to you, rising up early and speaking by speaking, but you did not hear and I called you, but you did not answer, I shall also do to this house, which is called by my name, in which you trust. So they trusted in the temple at, yeah? Uh, Jerusalem. Eh? I don't know. Yeah, you were right. Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Yeah. It just didn't come through. Oh. I'm just getting so everyone's flowing. He's talking to Jerusalem now. Mm. Right? Israel has been scattered. Mm -hmm. Remember, he did that first, and then he came for the older brother. Yep. <clears throat> Or the other part of the bride, which I which I gave to you and your fathers, as I did it to Shiloh, and I shall cast you out of my presence, as I have cast out all your brothers of the seed of Ephraim, which is Israel. Okay, yep. they've been cast out. <laughs> wow, and he's going to do that to them, and he's Jeremiah, the servant, saying this. Wonderful servant. Mm. And you, and you do not pray for this people, nor lift up a cry or prayer for them, nor make intercession to me, for I do not hear you. Do you not see what they are doing in the cities of Yehuda, in the streets of Jerusalem? The children are gathering wood, the fathers are lighting the fire, and the women are kneading their dough to make cakes for the sovereigness 
of the heavens. Hot cross buns. Birthday cakes. Mm. Yeah? yeah? And to pour out drink offerings to other mighty ones to provoke me. So they're doing all this for a reason. It is me they are provoking, declares Yahuwah. It is not themselves under the shame of their faces. Therefore, thus said the Master Yahuwah, see my displeasure and my wrath is poured out on this place on man and on beasts and on the trees and the field and on the fruit of the ground. And it shall burn and not be quenched. So that sort of really happened. Mm. You know, Israel's like a wasteland, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> thus people of Yahuwah of hosts, thus said Yahuwah of the hosts, the Elohim of Israel, add your burnt offerings to your slaughterings and meat and eat meat. For I did not speak to your fathers or command them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Mithraim about matters of burnt offerings or slaughterings. But this word I did command them, saying, What? Obey my voice. Keep going to the end. And I shall be your Elohim, and you be my people, and walk in all the ways that I have commanded you, so that it be well with you. Okay. Obey, obey my voice. Relationship again? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. There's a little G beside the voice. Obey my voice. And down the bottom it says, Abraham did so. And Yahuwah, Yahushua again laid down this condition for Israel to be his people, and the same applies to us. Mm. These rules mm. apply to us. Obey my voice. He wants a relationship. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. But they did not obey or incline their ear, but walked in the councils in the stubbornness of their evil heart and went backwards and not forward. From the day that your fathers came out of the land of Mitzrayim until this day, I have I even sent to all of my servants the prophets daily rising up early and sending them. I uh, remember years ago <clears throat> I found in the scripture and it said, return to the old ways, and I said to Max, you know, return to the old ways. He said, no, go to the new ways. Mm. <laughs> I was right. He was wrong. Mm. But they did not obey me. I was really hurt that, that he was so horrible to me, you know. Mm. They did not obey me or incline their ear, verse 26, but stiffen their neck. There's the word we're looking at. We just looked up this scripture. They did not obey me or incline their ear, but stiffened their neck. They did evil more than their fathers. Mm -hmm. Right? All the kings and Solomon and all that before them, mm -hmm. they did worse. So now they're going to get the crunch of Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. And you shall speak all these words to them, though they do not listen to you. Mm -hmm. Does that sound familiar, Mark? Yep. And you shall also call to them, though they do not answer you. Sound familiar? Yeah. But you shall say to them, this is a nation that did not obey the voice of Yahuwah, their Elohim, nor did they accept instruction. Truth has perished and has been cut off from their mouth. Truth has perished and has been cut off from their mouth. Here's this Yeremi Yahu, this guy. Yahu. He's out there telling them. He's standing in the gates of Jerusalem when they're coming in. Mm. Faithful servant. And he's saying all this stuff mm. and telling them and declaring to them what's going to happen. Yahuwah let them know, didn't he? All the way through. Yeah. Um, truth has perished and has been cut off from their mouth. Cut off your hair and throw it away. I love that. <laughs> Take up a lamentation on the on the bare heights. <coughs> For Yahuwah has rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. This is probably why Hitler hated the Jews so much. Because <coughs> they didn't give the truth. They had it, but they lost it. They're deceived now. 
They didn't accept Yahusha mm. as, as the Messiah. Mm. <coughs> so they missed it. Verse 30, for the children of Yehuda have done what is evil in my eyes, declares Yahuwah. They have set their abominations in the house which is called by my name to defile it. And they have built the high places of Topheth. Now this is why they made the cakes and did all those things, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire. This is Israel. Look how far they went away which I did not command, nor did it come to my heart. Therefore see the days are coming, declares Yahuwah. There's Jer Jeremy Yahu saying all this stuff, when it shall no longer be called Topheth of the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter, for they shall bury in Topheth until no room is left. And the corpses of this people shall be food for the birds of the heavens, for the beasts of the earth, with none to frighten them away. And in the cities of Yehuda and in the streets of Jerusalem, I shall make to cease the voice of rejecting and the voice of gladness. Rejoicing. <laughs> Sorry. I shall make to cease the voice of rejoicing and the voice of gladness. The voice of who? The bridegroom. And the voice of the? Bride. For the land shall become a waste. I think it is a waste, don't you, Israel? Yeah. yeah. The land is a waste. It just yeah. looks dry ass. Mm. So mm. he did it then. Mm. And it's never come back. Mm. He's always had a remnant that taught the truth through the generations. Yeah. And I'm yeah. sure there are believers that came in. Mm. But this is the end of it. Mm. This, this warning is for us. They wonder why there's famines and all sorts of dreadful things happening in the world because they, they won't listen. They're worshipping idols, aren't they? Mm. Look at Africa, full of idolatry. Yeah. <clears throat> there's no one there to tell them. Mm. So, three words, nose ring, crown and neck. Mm. We've got to the neck, Mark. Got to the neck. Yeah. So what's your, what, what's your flow on that, mate? Well, I was just thinking when you were saying about, because um, this is the first time I've really looked at it, like uh, the, the the older brother was scattered as well. And when you were saying about uh, Hitler, why Hitler hated them so much, well, not him personally, but... Uh, he did. He did, but, I mean, he wouldn't have known that they were supposed to hold on to a covenant or whatever. He wouldn't have cared. He just hated them. But... He would have. It's, he would have. Go on. Yeah. Oh, okay. He's, He's supposed to have studied the scripture a lot. Oh, okay. Well, I'm just looking at it. Everybody treats them like they they were the victims. Oh, the Holocaust. The Holocaust is such victims, you know. But when you look at it from a scriptural point of view, in Yahuwah's eyes, um... You know, it's a pretty brazen thing to say, but they, they had it coming. And that, it's not just them. Yeah, it's one thing to pick out the Holocaust and say that was hideous, but all the world wars. How many millions of people have died in all the world wars who weren't the, yeah. old, who weren't the older brother, they were the younger brother. So yeah. it's the whole world that's been doing it. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, when you look at the people and there's still family members alive and how horrible it was and... Yeah, you feel sorry for them, but when you look at it from Yahuwah's eyes, it's written in the scripture. You didn't hold on to my covenant. I'm going to lay you waste. They had a, they had, um, you know, when the Pharisees, after Yahushua died, Pharisees took over, you know. Who taught the wicked woman? Well, it would have been the, the backslidden <laughs> Israel. So where Christianity came from. Yeah. From Israel. Mm. They wouldn't um they wouldn't accept Yahusha. They probably got mixed in with the surrounding cultures, surrounding pagan cultures, but they allowed themselves to do it. Well, when you look at it, seventy AD, who squashed who squashed Israel? Titus. So the Romans Right? Yeah. But they, there still would have been Pharisees there then, causing trouble again. 
right? Mm-hmm. They were causing trouble again, trying to involve, you know, um, to create Christianity. And they, they would have been, they would have been um, giving information to Titus and to Constantine. Because remember when um, Constantine got together and had the uh, thing of Nicaea? Council. Council of Nicaea. And a whole lot of the rabbis and other people ran for their lives. Mm-hmm. Well, those ones that really believed, I would say, that they were the remnant. And I still believe there's been a remnant right through. Mm-hmm. There has to be a remnant that's going to come because I don't think the whole older brother is going to accept this. No. Remember there were some Pharisees that accepted Yahushua yeah. and John the Baptist? Yeah. yeah. So, so I think it's going to be like that. Mm. I don't think the whole older brother will accept it, you know. Mm. They want to do the nodding and the curls and the hats and the, you know. <clears throat> it's insanity. Yeah. It's not yeah. love. It's not love and sweetness and gentleness. You know, the, the, Nazarene, <laughs> the Nazarene have to understand that because they've come out of a lot of us have come out of Christianity and we've accepted that that's a war, but then we, they don't face that um, the older brother is, just, is a whore as well. They've, yeah. they've held on to a lot of foundational parts of the, the Torah, which is great, but um, don't go looking at everything they do, you know, because you get caught up again, you lose your sense of humor. <laughs> Yeah, you know. Yeah. So, so serious and oh, walking on eggshells around them and oh, you've offended me and oh, you can't say this and you can't say that and oh, just go away. You know, it's not it's not love. You know? We're really blessed to be in a country like this where it's a a bit laid back and it's not so formal. Yeah. And uh, we we haven't um, mixed with a lot of formality. No. Social formality, which is really Rome anyway, you know. But mm-hmm. um, you know, I believe there's going to be a remnant come out of the older brother. I don't believe the whole older brother is going to come out, mm-hmm. but I believe, like when Yahushua was here, there were some, and the emissaries, there were some that converted over, and they were rabbis mm-hmm. and priests. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I reckon it's going to be like that. Mm. I think it's just going to be a quiet thing. Yeah. What are you doing? Well, I'm, I'm laughing at your, uh, your, your prayer shawl. That's my cardigan. <laughs> You're being a rabbi. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I bet there'll be people out there saying, Yahushua wouldn't have told him to have a shave. <laughs> Well, that's where I'm at in my life at the moment. Yeah. I can stand a beard and it stinks and you wash it and it still stinks. <laughs> and the oh, I get so itchy, my hair so curly, just grows back in and it's hideous. <laughs> it's all right with the people who've got straight hair, but, oh, mine's dreadful. It's so thick. You know, you can, oh, it's hideous. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right for me. I only got three hairs, so. <laughs> yeah, it's good for you. Yeah. I can't get there. I'll, may, maybe, you know, when I'm not working with the public and they don't expect all this sort of, I can't make excuses. I just have to go through it again, what Lou said about beards. <laughs> yeah. oh! If I have to go there, I have to go there. Yeah. Well, like you said, it's not about looking at other people's walk. It's about looking at your own. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're talking about the relationship. We're not talking about beards, no, are we? No, we're talking about that relationship. Beards and look at the relationship he had with his people. Mm. And they for, forsook it. They didn't, oh, where is Yahuwah? Who is Yahuwah? You know? Mm. How disgusting. And they're burning their children. That's worse than what the pagans did. Mm. Just mm. So, It all comes from them. All comes from Israel. And I think that's what Israel has to see and repent for. You know, repent for that sin that's been passed on. 
through them. It's no good blaming Adam and Eve. Mm. They actually had a relationship with Yahuwah and forsook it. Mm. And they put their hands in there and cry out and wonder why they haven't got a country. Well, any, as Lou says, any wise ones in the remnant will uh, realise that it's going to be burnt to smithereens because that's supposed to be the most H-O-L-Y place in the world. That's what the Pope wants. He wants to sit on the throne in Yerushalayim and declare himself mm -hmm. as Elohim. That's the big conquest. But you heard you won't allow that. I don't think. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think they're going to build the temple. I don't think they'll get to that because it doesn't say that they do. They could. I don't know. I don't know for sure. But I just think it's. I mean, maybe he wants to sin board right to the fore. You know, because they're going to, if they do do that, I know they're breeding special special cows. They're back breeding to get the original heifer. Mm -hmm. I heard all about that. Lots of things like that going down. But uh, if they do, what an abomination that'll be. You know? Yeah, right. Bring back the sacrifices, yeah. which yeah. means they want to cut out what Yahushua's done. So, what sort of wickedness is in that mind, Mark? Very. That they, that's Satan. Mm. They just mm. want to say that he didn't exist. Mm. You know? Mm. And here we are on the airwaves saying, yes, he does exist. He's alive and real. He's in the hearts of his believers. Yeah. And who right. are we? Yeah. yeah. We're nothing or nobody. Yeah, what do you want to say, Mike? Oh, Craig sent something through today, something about, um, I haven't read it fully yet, but he was saying that um, it was something he found that the Yahoo Dean, the Jews, were saying, and they were saying that we have to take on more of a Messiah. We have, we have to recreate the Messiah mindset, like that. what Oprah used to say, you have to find the, the Messiah within or the love within. You know that thing, have it yourself, like, you know, they're going along with that sort of thing now. Find the Messiah in you. You know, You're yelling at me. Am I? <laughs> <laughs> You're getting very excited. I must be passionate tonight. <laughs> you are, you are, you are, you are. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, that's a load of bunk, you know. Cutting out the real Messiah and try and find him wherever you are, you know. How do you feel about this talk we've had about the Jews? Oh, it's woken me up a lot. I just realised... Because you always have this. Whenever you talk about them, you got to be careful and don't ever talk about the Holocaust. You know, and, and you know you got to be so careful and delicate with them because they're they're such victims. Oh, I want to take away from what they went through, but I just look at what they didn't do. You know, you know, and didn't pass on the word, didn't keep the relationship, didn't keep his presence. Yeah, I mean, you, you could talk about every single world like that. I'm sure there's very similar statistics in the people that lost their lives. Maybe, I don't know. But well, if you have a look at it, butting in, yeah. look at the Pope's plan. Mm. He's using all the funds in the world so he can control everything around the Middle East so he can build the temple so he can sit there. Mm. Somehow, some way, he wants to be sitting on that mount. Mm. This is the Black Pope, of course. And they want to operate from there. Mm. What do you think of that plan? Yeah. And they're trying to work that through politics, religion, everything. Mm. And they're working it. Yeah. yeah. So that he can declare himself as him. GFT on earth. Mm. Mm. What do you think of that plan? It's wicked. And who wants to build a temple at the moment? The Yahudim do, don't they? Yeah, we'll just say the Jews. Jews, yeah. Jews to do. make it simple. Yeah, Jews do. So who's being tricked? The Jews. 
in their own stupidity, the, the, the UN have told them to come back to the land. In their own stupidity, they believed it. And they've tried to prove scripture that it's going to happen. It's not going to happen until Yerushalayim comes back down on earth and that's going to be permanent. But it's going to be the city that he creates. And those that have everlasting life that pass this test and get there, they'll be coming down in that city. So it's not going to achieve what the, what the Pope wants, he's not going to achieve it, is he? If he does, it's going to be blasted off the face of the earth. Same as the, the temple that um, uh, the turrets they built in Babylon, Nimrod, they were mm. smashed down. Mm. So this will be smashed down too. Mm. And the real city will be there. What about the arrogance that they think they can do it? and declare that they are G-O-D on earth. They think that G-O-D is asleep. They think Yahoo is asleep and he doesn't know what he's doing because they can do all this wickedness on earth, destroy people, everything they're doing, you know? The wicked system that we're under, we're all just slaves to. You know, the Catholic Church, They've set themselves up as the authority on earth and they've just set themselves up. They've just made rules and laws and all over the world and declared that they are. And it's all a lie. And everyone's going along with it and believing it and just being sucked into it, you know. The pathway to hell is wide open and many there are that travel it. Enter at the narrow gate through Yahusha. Sorry about it in there. What were you going to say? I don't know. It's great what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't hold it back. Yeah. So, you know, if you look at the Jewish situation, it's pretty dire. It's pretty impossible for them to turn back. So they're just on this roll that the, that the UN has led them to. The Catholic Church is behind it all. And they're just suckers. But there's going to be a remnant that sees this and comes out. Yeah. And they'll just whiz off, get out of Jerusalem, mm. get out of Israel before it just gets crashed down. Because in these scriptures tonight, he's going to do it. He's going to burn, mm. isn't he? Yeah. He's not going to put up with it. Mm. Now, what do you want to say, Mark? Oh, not much. No. I just thought, I just thought then that... Uh, it's such a complicated system and every single, well, the older and younger brother have perverted the, the true way so much that people can't, you know, you tell them you're part of Nazarene or you, the key words that you use when you're telling anybody anything just makes them run away. You, you can't use the word Torah, you can't use the word Hebrew ways or ancient paths or you know, the true scripture, even scriptures, that word's perverted now because you don't just think you're a Christian. Um, any possible thing you could use to show people the true way, they will automatically have a preconceived idea of what you are because all the religions have been, have perverted the true way and Satan's done that so that people will just run from us, you know. So really the only people who do have is uh, that are open are uh, those that are just so desperate and scum of the earth and, and, and so lowly that they're, they're willing to listen to anything you say because anybody with half a brain won't come near us because look at who wants to hear about the scripture look at all the different people who have taken the scripture and used it for their own you know workings <laughs> you do I don't agree with you no well, Jeremy Yahoo went in. Okay. Mm. And so how did you get out into what you're into? Through hearing it. What did Yahuwah say to Jeremy Yahoo in this? They won't listen. Mm. They won't come. Do it anyway. Do it anyway. Okay. There are things to do. Mm. No good being angry about it. Yeah. And I think you can talk about all those things. Mm. You know, they say in business you don't talk about religion 
or politics. Mm. Well, when you've got a handle on it like this and you understand who's controlling politics, who's controlling religion, who's controlling mm. the wealth, mm. you can express it. Go ahead. Yeah. If they run, let them run. If they, mm. pardon me, think you're weird, well, mm. who's weird? <laughs> yeah, they are. They are, mate. Like Jeremy Yahoo, he went yeah. in there, mm. right in the face of all those Pharisees, mm. and he said it. Yeah. yeah. Huh? Don't be afraid, just say it. Oh, of course, when it's appropriate. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You don't make an argument, mm. but you can have a pleasant, friendly discussion. That's what Lou does all the time in his business. People come in and they might say something and he'll just give them a spiel. Mm. If something comes out of it, great. They might go and tell somebody else what Lou said and then you don't know what's happening. Mm. It's working. Yeah. It's a chain reaction happening, mm. especially now that we're all going to be networking. Mm. It's going to happen, Mark. Going to go through like wildfire. Yeah. Because he said he's going to do all this. Yeah. There are going to be shiny ones. Mm. There are going to be those that know he's going to give them all the answers to tell the people mm. when Satan, you know, before Satan is removed. Mm. He wants the remnant. He wants those that are just going to go to the death. I mean, what's life like without him? Mm. Who wants to live this life without his wonderful loving kindness within? Mm. Oh, forget it. Mm. Get it. It's not worth it. Yeah. But you plot on, you plot on, and you go on, and you're just so grateful. What about that servant of Abraham? Mm. How grateful he just bowed down and said, oh, this is so amazing, Father. You know, I asked you for this and there she is and it's all happened. Mm. How amazing. Mm. You know, and that can be with it. That's the sort of relationship he wants with it. Just blows your brain out. How's that, how's that servant going to feel when he sees you check his mother's died and he's lonely and he's out in the bush meditating and, you know, because he misses her so much and there's a lovely wife for him. Mm. Who has designed it and planned it, mm. told Abraham to tell the servant. Servant goes out and goes through all this, comes back, sees the happiness and the joy. Mm. Wonderful. How would he feel? Yeah. Well, that's what it's like. You know, we can all be involved in this relationship. And he wants everyone to know that it's, he's that open about it. Mm. He's that real and genuine. Mm. Talk to him, you know. Yeah. Get to know him through his word. Mm. Oh, it's just wonderful. Oh, that's a much better mindset. I stand corrected. Wonderful. I'm not correcting <laughs> you, mate. I'm just, I'm just sharing something with you. Oh, that's amazing. If you change your mind, okay. Oh, don't worry about what people say and think. Where are they coming from? Yeah, insanity. Look, look where we're coming from. Mm. Oh, look where we're coming from. Mm. Yeah. That's um, that's the scripture that Pastor Max rejected. Is it really? Yeah, it's got. Can you read that up at the top? Hang on. There. Sydney, 3rd of MAY, 2002. That's when he got it. Oh. We didn't get it then. No, we didn't get it till about 2004, did we? <laughs> he had that there all that time. 2004, it was, yeah. Only that, only that um, Sony gave me the fossilised customs mm. and then mm. he gave me that. I can't understand, you know. Yeah. 
It was put there for us, for me. Yeah. Oh my goodness, me. Yeah. yeah. It was all our answers, the answers to everything we've gone through. <laughs> yeah. Take it and run. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How long have we been going? Uh, in six minutes, we will have been two hours. You're disgusting, Muriel. <laughs> <laughs> I, I looked at my last lip, the last one I did, and I thought, oh, my goodness, doesn't it go on and on and on? <laughs> Every word I said, I had to have you respond, and I thought, what am I doing? And I told Victoria, and she said, oh, you're disgusting. It's dreadful. It's drawn out. So I thought, tonight I'm not going to draw it out. I'm just going to go for it. <laughs> well, uh, we're all learning, and I uh, I just think one day there's going to be a lot of people who are hungry and thirsty, and, and then they come across all these old mad tapes, <laughs> and they'll go, oh, these people were going for it. You know, I mean, if... If if the technology was such 30 years ago, I would have loved to see the conversations Lou would have had with Chris Costa and all the other people that were when they were first learning all this and all the emotions and everything, but they didn't have it back then. So uh, people, well, it wasn't me. no people in 20 years, if time goes on that long, will be able to look back and look at the nut, look at these nuts. <laughs> well, this is the time where we can be the bride and we can. Ex Rest our love towards our brother and sister yeah. straight before their face. Yeah. Just loving them and being genuine and kind and nice. Mm. You know? Yeah. That's the best thing in the world. Look look what Phyllis said about Victoria. Yeah. Victoria's yeah. just been flying. She can't believe that someone could feel like that. Mm. So this is wonderful. Yeah. So the more the love's out there flowing and you're talking to all these people, just keep going, Mark. Mm. Killing it. Mm. Anyway, it's time to close now, isn't it? It's been <laughs> far too long. It's time to close. Two hours. Yeah. Oh, the first half an hour was, was fellowship. Mm. All right. So it was quite shorter tonight. Yeah. All right, then. You, maybe you can put them in two sections. Okay. Cut the fellowship out so it won't be so long. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, we'll do that then. Just have a conversation. Okay. That's from fellowship. You can come into the branches program. Because <laughs> that's well, what you yeah. yeah. Okay then, mate. I love you. Great. Love you too, love mate. Up there. Will do. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>